Hi, and welcome back to the photographycourse.net YouTube channel. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about personal photography projects and how they can help you grow and improve as a photographer. And at the end, I'll share about two projects that I'm working on. One of them I started way back when I got my first camera. Let's start with the best idea I know for a personal photography project that is guaranteed to transform your photographs. If you do this project right through from the beginning to the end, it will not only change the way your photographs look, but it'll change the way you think about photography in general. The 365 Days of Photography Challenge is all about using your camera every single day for a year. If you do this, you'll get really familiar with it. You'll be able to pick it up and use the controls and have a real feel for your equipment, much more than if you only use it, say, on a Sunday afternoon once a month or when you go on vacation. Really, the key to learning anything is practice and repetition. And at the beginning, yeah, it can be challenging. If you've ever learned to drive a manual shift car, you'll know this. You've got to think about so many different things changing gears and using the clutch and looking in your rear view mirror, make sure there's nothing coming before you pull out. But as you practice and as you get more confident, all of these things will become second nature. You don't have to really concentrate on them. And using your camera can become like this if you practice regularly. So the 365 days of photography is a great way to do this. And if you learn a little bit, step by step, if you're learning a little bit day by day, this will keep you motivated and on track to really become much more skilled than when you start. On photographycourse.net, we have a course that's 365 days of photography. And if you enroll in this course, you will receive teaching for every day for a full year and there's challenges to go with it. So you'll not only be learning, you'll have opportunity to put what you're learning into practice and really grow as a photographer. And this is truly the best way that I know to teach photography and for you to learn photography. And this is why I've developed this course. So another great project that you might like to engage in is a day in the life a day in the life of whatever you like. It could be your own life, it could be a dog's life, it might be a school or a workplace life. You don't need to photograph it all on one day. You can spread it out over a number of months, but it's a really fascinating project and it'll help you as a photographer think about storytelling with your images. And this is the real strength of the day in the life project because you want to illustrate the step by step from waking up until going to bed of whatever your chosen topic is. And so it's really fun, but you've really got to think about it. And if you spread it out over a period of time, you can then go back and fill in the gaps or add extra to what you originally might have thought about it as you see your project progressing. Another cool project that you can embark on, and this one can be quite challenging, is that you can volunteer yourself as a photographer, so to a local community project or volunteer at your place of worship or a sports club or an environmental group, anywhere that might benefit and be really blessed by you giving them photos. And this will challenge you because you will be in a position that you're not only having to take photos to please yourself, you're going to have to take photos that are intended for another use and meet the needs of other people. And to me, this is the biggest difference between an amateur and a professional, by the way. It's not that a professional earns money from what they photograph and the, the jobs that they do, but it's that a professional has to provide photographs to a client or to an editor that suit the needs of what they've been commissioned to do. And if you're working as a volunteer photographer, it will certainly 
push you outside your comfort zones at times when you're asked to do stuff that you might not normally do or even that you might not want to. If you're committed to uh, being a good volunteer, you will work through and you will provide the pictures as required. So this is another cool project that you can do. And another good one that doesn't require any real thought about what subject that you might photograph, and I know this is a big issue with a lot of people, is like, oh, what do I photograph for a project? Take self-portraits. I mean, I'm not talking about selfies with your cell phone. I'm talking about setting up to take really good portraits and this way you'll always have a subject because you're always there. It takes a little bit of technical work around sometimes if you don't have a remote for your camera but there's a self timer, there's ways of doing things and as you practice this you'll get used to the feel of it about different lenses that you can use and how far from the camera you need to be. And keep an eye on photographycourse.net because my colleague Taya IV is at the moment producing a course on self-portraiture and she's fabulous she really knows this stuff she does absolutely gorgeous self-portraits and I'm sure she'll be producing a course that will teach you everything you need to know about this. So two of the projects that I've been working on for a long period of time are my photo montages and my outdoor studio. The photo montages I started way back in the late 80s when I first bought a camera. I saw a video of the British artist David Hockney putting together photo montages and I just was hooked on this idea. I loved it. And so I started producing them on film and cutting and pasting them and then have since worked through and are now producing them of course with digital and I've also sort of morphed into doing them with video as well. And this is something that's always been a passion of mine. It's so fascinating and it's such a, an endless scope for creative expression with my camera and different ways than you can do with a single image. So by putting together multiple images like this into a single piece, you're kind of stepping outside of the realms of time and space because you can move both those things and have control of those things when you're making a photo montage, whereas you can't do that in a single image. And so the other project that I like to do as often as possible is to set up my outdoor studio. And normally I'll do this in a remote village, I'll photograph local people, and it's cool because I'm working in their own environment, so they are within their comfort zone. If I was to bring some of these people out of their villages, down into the city, into a photography studio with lots of light and busyness and people and hustle and bustle, I wouldn't be able to get the same type of photographs that I can get by going into their village. And I love working with daylight, I love working with natural light. And so over the years I have just, I've tweaked the background but I've also really worked on the technique and tweaked the technique to bring it to a point where I'm able to capture photographs outdoors in a mountain village that look like they were captured in a studio with studio lighting. And it's just been a great pleasure to be able to, to do this and to be able to give the portraits back to the people. This one lady, I'd photographed her a number of years before and we were going back to the same village. She knew we were coming and she came the second time with three changes of clothing because she wanted to really look her best for the portrait. So lots of fun and lots of really challenging um, ideas to work through to develop the, the background and the lighting so I can get it the best as I possibly can. And of course, it's a work in progress. So these are the two favorite projects that I've been working on for a long time and I'll continue to do so for a lot longer yet. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been an encouraging video. If you feel inclined to, check out our 365 Days of Photography course and look out for Tyre's course on self-portraiture. In the meantime, if you've liked this video, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, give us a like, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and leave your comments down below to let us know what you enjoyed about the video. Thanks for watching.